Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is a super exciting time for everybody. Our church, it's summer, vacation Bible school. I tell you what, the Joneses, Jennifer, they worked so hard. I'm sure there were others on this. Can we give them a round of applause? This is beautiful. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're going to do something a little different. Um, all the children that are here, we'd like you to come up and sit with us. Um, Eddie will regale you with his bully wink in a minute, but we're going to ask you to come up for the first song if you don't mind. And all those that can rise, if you would rise, so we could begin our worship with our first song. Continue to lead us in worship, a reminder that the altar is open in these opening songs as well if you have special prayer requests. It's time to 
be seated. Do we have any other children that didn't want to come up at that minute that would like to come up? Got good candy bars. I don't see any others. All righty, we're going to do our children's story uh, with you this morning. So good to see all of you here, and you know what today is, right? What is today? Father's, Father's Day. So, of course, we've got a Bullywink Bullfrog story about Father's Day, all right? Let's put our hands up in the air and say together, long, long, long time ago, in a far away place on the Withlacoochee River. Reverend Bullywink Bullfrog, what's the bullfrog saying? Ah, you got it down pat. Well, they were going to have a special guest to share about uh, Father's Day in their service. Now, we're going to have that right when you go next door. Uh, Justin is going to speak to us for a few minutes about his dad. He's our new assistant minister, and uh, I know some of you know him very well, his daughter over there. So, uh, and his dear wife uh, helps with the Sunday school department, so she'll be your teacher today as well. But in Bullywinks Bullfrog Church, he had Starry Buck, big deer, that was going to talk about his dad. So Starry Buck, he said, you know, and a buck is another name for a deer, right? So Starry Buck, Starry was his first name. He said, I first have to tell you about my dad and what his name is. He said his first name is C, not like the letter C, but like the ocean, C, S-E-A. said his middle name, it's a slang name, it's called Addle, and it's uh, short for antlers. He's got a big stack of antlers, and of course his last name is Best. So he said, Dad and I, and you know, Seattle Best, and Starry Buck, they did something with coffee later on. I don't know anything about, I should have got a better laugh from that, you know, seeing. 
Okay, well, Seattle Best and Starry Buck, he said, when I first time I looked in the mirror and all of a sudden the reflection back on me, I thought I was seeing my dad when really I'm seeing myself because I look like my dad. You ever look in the mirror and maybe you look like your mother or your father or yes, that can be a little scary sometimes, can it? Yes, 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 very, very much. So he said, but then I remembered that Bible verse, John 14. Uh, where it says that if you've seen me, Jesus said, you've also seen the Father. And we know that Jesus is very loving and kind, right, and considerate and just amazing. And so Jesus said, when you see me, you've seen our heavenly Father, God the Father. Can we all say amen? Amen. Amen. Well, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you again for all of our young folks here today, for our Sunday school teacher. Father, we ask your blessings also for Vacation Bible School, which is right here upon us, and Father's Day. May it be a great blessing for all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you carry it, Leah? Stand up, turn around, greet one another. back to our pews and be seated, if you will. We've asked Brother Justin in all three services, our new associate minister, to come and share a few words about uh, his earthly father for in honor of Father's Day and then to recognize our fathers that are here today. Justin, if you'll do that, please. I feel it's fitting as, uh, again, I shared in my See, again, what my father says, you are never a stranger in your father's house. We've got to remember that every time we come into our father's house, we are never a stranger in our father's house. Pastor Eddie was asking for my input on this service. You know, you know, do you want to do what you're going to share with the kids, or do you want the kids to go? Doesn't your wife and kids maybe we want to hear you? Probably not. My wife and kids probably don't want to hear me. And as I was thinking about this and thinking in uh, terms with my father, my father is a minister, as many of you all know, and he unfortunately had us kids in every one of his services all the time. And my mother there, of course. And one of the things that was funny is we were one of his biggest critics because any word he misspoke, missaid, we then had family lunch and dad got critiqued over that and all. So I just thought that was funny. So now luckily my family can't critique me because they're gone. Unfortunate, there is video evidence of all of this. So we shall see what happens. Uh, as I was going through and thinking and preparing my ideas about my father, uh, I realized that putting 38 years in a small amount of time is nearly impossible, so I won't attempt to do that because we have another beautiful sermon prepared for you. Uh, but I also started feeling senses of guilt as I started thinking about other people's lives and how many people have had to suffer on this earth with an absentee father. I never had to do that. I felt guilty as I was laying in bed. I'm like, it just, it just this sense of guilt. You have been blessed on this earth with an earthly father that was there every moment of your life in various means. As, whenever he could be, the, he was there. He's going to probably be supporting me, and then you'll find out in a little bit upset with me. Uh, again, as I, I'm always good at upsetting my father in various ways, but loving and supportive nonetheless. But... Uh, just how blessed I was and that it's just amazing to have an earthly father that resembles, you know, a Christ-like man. On a lighter note again, my father, uh, whenever we were children, he happened to come to a, uh, a youth camp that before any of us, I think maybe my oldest sister was born. I can't remember exactly where all this happened. It may have been around my year of birth, but I remember him saying there is a place called Harmony Hill Youth Camp in Missouri in a little town called Reform, Missouri. So a good place to go get reformed at this church camp as youth. And he felt impressed upon him by God that he needed to bring his family to this camp every year just to get, he just felt the presence of God and the people around him there, and he wanted to have us there. My father is a beautiful and amazing man, but my father is a human. Imagine that, like many of us. And my father wanted to, one year, go out and help work on the campsite. 
and work different facilities, working on this and that. And it so happened that year that my grandfather was still alive, and he came out to Missouri. And so we were all there working on the camp, different facilities. My father is fairly thrifty with his hands, but not always. He's one of those that just sometimes it doesn't end up being fixed after he's done fixing it. <laughs> he's gotten a lot better about that. He has learned much. Um, but so my grandfather was there, and after my father had fixed something, my grandfather went around and was having to then fix it behind him. My dad, for some reason, felt the need to get on a big, nice John Deere tractor that was, happened to be on the premises there, driving around, and he somehow found one of the mini picnic tables and crushed it. <laughs> Broke it, I don't know to what extent, but he, he hit it to where it needed to be repaired. And his dad comes up to him, puts his hands on his shoulder, and he says, son, why don't you sit down and take a break so I can get caught up on fixing all the stuff you've broken? <laughs> The thing that I want to say about that is my father is an earthly human man that exemplifies the image of our Heavenly Father. The scripture that was brought to me uh, that Pastor Eddie will, I believe, share in his, or, well, I don't, Pastor Eddie shared in his sermon, but also is where we talk about where whenever his, Jesus' disciples are knowing, how do we see the Father? And he's like, if you know me, you know the Father. If you know me, you know Ralph Edward Wheeler, because I can sometimes go around and break and mess up stuff, especially as a father. I fail daily as a father, but I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying. And I think that's one of the things as men of the church that we need to stand up and support other young men out there. Whenever you see a young man, help support him. Give him that love. Reach out and support him in a church and help usher and mentor because that's very important that we are making disciples, and that's the best way we can do it. I ask at this time, if there is a father, if you're a father, if you would stand with me here as I am standing as a father, that those in this church might be able to show their appreciation as we try to make the image of Jesus on earth so that others can know our Heavenly Father. I'd like to thank you all. You can be seated or you can stand for the rest of the service if you so choose. Let's thank Justin. I love his testimony. That was great. If you'll take your bulletin out, Miss Lori is going to give us our welcome and update on a few announcements. Lori? We'd like to welcome all visitors today. We know that you can attend services anywhere, but we are truly blessed that you chose our church today. When you leave, please stop by the Welcome Center in the lobby for your free gift. Welcome to everyone in church and everyone online. You are all part of our family. Bulletins. Please review your bulletins. They can be found on the round table in the lobby. There will be a sign-up sheet at the Welcome Center in the lobby for those, that you would, for those that would like to order the Dr. Shaver's devotional books. We have used up all of our funds that we had for the free books. So if you are interested, they are $15 per book. You can sign the sheet and pay when you pick it up, or you can drop the money in the offering plate to the church for the book. This is also a special Sunday, thank you, Lori, uh, to recognize we have three graduating seniors, uh, and we are delighted to have them. So I'm going to ask uh, if Shelby and Tyler and Remy would go ahead and come forward, uh, and I just want to mention uh, when they get up here, and then we're going to have Laura, if you'll go ahead and prepare to come up from the youth department, but if y'all would come on up here. Uh, these are three that are graduating from high school this year, and we are just delighted that they're here with us today. If y'all come up on the chancel, let's welcome them. <laughs> Laura, if you'll make your way forward at this time, and uh, we have uh, Sue representing the United Methodist Women uh, as well, and we have uh, gifts for our students uh, for you and for your continual education uh, in that process. Laura, if you'll come over here to the mic. Uh, Sue, she's going to share a word, and then we're going to have a prayer for our graduating seniors. Yes. Josh wishes he could be here, but he's at All-Star Tournament with our son. But Josh and I would like to congratulate you, Shelby, Tyler, and Remy, on your graduation from high school. This scholarship is just a small token of accomplishment from our youth group. I hope that the last two years you have spent with us have helped you grow closer to Christ. Please believe that Jesus 
and his good news are both current and critical in your lives today and growing forward. We are humbled to offer you this scholarship and wish you nothing but the best. We love you guys and blessings. Prayer for our uh, graduates. Father, we thank you so much for our Ruby Walker Scholarship through our United Methodist Women and Sue, our president here today, Laura, our president of our Youth Fellowship, for our three young folks also. Bless them, Lord. Take care of them as only you can. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Let's welcome again them, and y'all may be seated. Would you please rise for the reading of the Holy Scripture? Today's scripture comes from Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. If you'll turn your uh, bulletin over to your prayer concerns, we appreciate that very much. Our tradition has been to always bring forward our offering, as Brother Wesley is doing that, but we are still in the process of educating our congregation. So many of you put your offering in with prayer concerns as you depart, and uh, the, there's still plates in the back by all the doors. Can we all say amen? amen. You know, we have so many in pre preparing for Vacation Bible School, so our praise the Lord for this week, of course, is all of the folks that are volunteering their time. And I know we've done a number of times we've clapped today, but I know that Melinda is our chairperson. Uh, our decoration chairpersons are Johnny and Linda. And there's been a whole host of folks gathered around them that are doing so many different uh, ministries in preparing for this upcoming week. So may I ask if you uh, represent VBS, one of the volunteers, can you stand for a moment and let's just all put our hands together. All the volunteers, let's just put our hands together. Look at this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Um, after our uh, prayer time, we have uh, another song selection, of course. And um, uh, with that, um, is a, a very precious prayer time. And so you may have seen many of the folks here with the uh, pink shirts on. Uh, our scouts are going to their summer camp. And uh, so some of the scouts are here, some of the scout leaders. Um, but I'm going to ask if they will come during that next song and kneel at the altar or stand at the altar and let us have a prayer over them for they are departing for the week at scout camp. And we just appreciate our leadership so much. Uh, our scout leaders, and all the scouts as well. We want to remember also in prayer Paul Fata as he heads towards surgery towards the end of the month for cancer. Uh, Kathy Sanders, uh, we've been praying for her. She is at home and did well through her surgery, so please keep her in Ray, and I'm sure they're online worshiping with us right now. Elsie Guymon and Barbara Hulse are home from the hospital. Corky Riley is still in the hospital with a, a double kidney transplant. But he is doing very, very well. Uh, Carol Spinelli had a, a terrible car accident um, involving her car in a motorcycle. Some of you may have seen that online. And she is back home, so please keep her in your prayers. We want to continue to remember uh, Charlie and Adele Strasberger as well with the uh, grief that they're working through with the loss uh, in their families. And then I want to end the prayer request that we have is with the... Uh, um, Special day yesterday, we closed out our Adam and Eve class for the summer weeks and our youth class and our children's class. We were at the river, uh, had a great uh, time together. And then we had a, a baptism, six baptisms, and most of those were young people for the very first time asking Jesus to come into their heart to be baptized. Can you say amen? So. 
Justin and I uh, led that, and it was just beautiful, uh, and it was just a wonderful time. And I just praise the Lord as we continue to build uh, disciples. Amen? And that's where the Lord is for us. So if you will hold these in your hand, I'm going to ask Bobby uh, if you can come and lead us in prayer. And then during the next selection, as I said, if the scouts, and the altar is open for all, but especially the scouts will come for prayer. Bobby? Good morning. I'd like to thank all of you for being in the house of the Lord once again. Also, like to uh, say thanks to Justin for that little sharing between him and his father. I just remember those days with my dad. We, him and I, had the father and son relationship you're supposed to have, and I'm so thankful for that. Thank you, Justin, for for sharing. Um, I'd, just, I'd just like to add, well, give a, a praise report. About two weeks, two, three weeks ago, we were praying for Miss Mildred up in Uly, Florida. Her daughter called. Her mom went in for one thing and they found a little melanoma. Well, she went through the process so she went back last week and she had the, um, the, the sutures removed and her daughter kept asking the nurse, will my mom get to speak to the doctor about the results? And she said, well, the doctor won't be in today, but your mom, melanoma, is clear. Amen. So we ought to give them some praise today. <laughs> yeah. She called and told me and boy, I was just elated. I, and she said to thank all of you for praying for her mom. Boy, that, and I told her, I said, we're, we're a praying church, and prayer changes things. You know, so we ought to say amen today. Amen. amen. And it's so good to see Charlie and Adele back. Uh, Charlie and Adele, just, we just hope and pray that the good Lord still look in your direction in your time of, you know, of healing, uh, in in at this time of your the loss of your your family member, but just keep in mind and know that we still love you, and we still be praying for you. Um, so we I would like to reiterate those names that Pastor Ad lifted up today. That's on our prayer concerns. Um, they on the, on our list for a reason. They need our prayer. So we're going to continue to pray for those. We'd like to thank all of you that are in attendance today, those that are tuning in online, worshiping with us. We just thank God for life today. He woke us up this morning. Oh, and my grandmother used to say, started me on my way. <laughs> he didn't have to do it, but he did. So we're so grateful. Our altar is open, as Pastor Eddie stated, uh, to come and and just give it back to the Lord. I know we brought something here today that we don't want to take back home. Amen. So we ought to bring it to the altar today and give it to him. The Bible says, ask shall be given. Yeah. So we're going to ask that he take what we brought that we don't want to take back. Take it from us today. So as the music plays softly, we're going to go to our Heavenly Father today. Father, we come to you today as humble as we know how. Father, we come, some with burdens, some with requests, some with needs. But, Father, you know what they are. And we say thank you for who you are today. Thank you for your guidance and your mercy. We thank you for allowing Charlie and Adele to go and pay their final respect. Father, we thank you for them today. You gave them travel and mercy and grace to come back. Amen. You cleared a highway for them to come back today and be in our presence. So, Father, we say thank you, thank you for all that you've done for that family. Father, and as they adjust to the days to come, be their strong tower. Be a shoulder that they can lean on yeah. in time of need. Father, we know Charlie's going to call his brother name. But he won't answer here, but he's ampling from the heavens and above. And we say thank you for that today. We thank you for our congregation, those that are tuning in online. 
We thank you for the message that Justin shared with us. And Father, most important, we thank you for the results of Miss Mildred up in Uleaf, Florida. Oh, Father, we know when the doctor says no, you said yes. Father, we know you have the final say. You're the author and the finish of our faith. And today we have faith in you. You allow us to call on a name that answer our prayer. Call on a name in our time of need. Call on that name when we can't call no one else. When those that are turning their backs on us, you walk right beside us. We thank you for your guidance, for your love and your kind. And Father, all the names that we've lifted up, remembering those that are in nursing homes, those that are in county jails, correctional facilities, rehab centers, somebody there, Father, need a breakthrough. Remember Paul this morning. As Paul go through his treatment, his procedure, Father, Paul need a breakthrough. We know you've delivered for Paul before. And for we know you're not, you're not short of a miracle. Be with Paul and his family as he goes through the procedure once again. Father, we know you're going to help him. We know you're going to be in the room. Be the one that performs. You never failed us yet. And you brought us this far, Father, not to leave us. And today we're going to honor and glory your name. And, Father, we thank you for our church and the direction that we're going. We thank you for the delegates that stood in the gap for those that couldn't make it. And we thank you for our pastor today. Father, bless him and keep him as he guide us forward. Father, we know we're going to get a church that are standing on the truth. And we're going to magnify your name today. Oh, Father, I say thank you. Father, look on BBS. Melinda, as she guide us through, all the volunteers. Father, they call on me, and I'm going to answer the call. BBS, give us another chance, Father, to, to show the community and give back to what you've given us. And, Father, as we continue to worship today, look on our pastor and his family. Continue to, to bless him and keep a head of protection on around him. And, Father, as our worship team come, Father, let the songs that we sing be music to the ears. And we're going to honor and praise you. And may all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let's all rise together. And we're only doing one song now. So, uh, the scouts, if y'all will move forward as the song begins. And if anybody would like to stand behind them and pray for them, uh, the altar is open for all. So, there's, uh, we have prayer anointers on both sides. So, if you have a need, please come to the altar and pray as we worship together.
Love is here, love is now, love is war and from his hands, from his brow. Love is near, it satisfies, streams of mercy flowing from his side. And to the bruised and fallen, captive, bound and broken hearted, he is the Lord. Love is here, love is now, love is pouring from his hands, from his brow. Love is near, it satisfies, streams of mercy flowing from his side. Yes, streams of mercy flowing from his side. Father, we thank you for the song. The song says, love is here. Father, we know your mercy and grace is all, all over this place. Amen. Father, let your mercy and grace be upon us today. And Father, as we prepare for the message, let it be food for someone that is hungry this morning, water for someone that's thirsty. And Father, let our cup truly be runneth over. And may all of God's people say, Amen. 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 You may be seated. We are delighted today to have one of our uh, certified lay ministers to share with us. Many of you may know Steve Willis, but many of you, it may be for the first time. Close of the service, Steve and uh, Justin will be out in the narthex to greet you. Um, Steve is very active in a variety of places, our Stephen ministry, uh, as well as um, being our liturgists when we have the chancel choir uh, doing our cantatas. And he always speaks from a heart that loves Jesus. Um, he is a professor at the University of Florida. I struggle with that, but he is a professor there. And, uh, but his heart is uh, out in Louisiana, where he's from. And uh, we are just delighted. I, I am so excited about him taking this opportunity uh, that we have given him, but his willingness to share the Word of God together. So I'm just going to say, everybody say amen, and Steve, come share with us, please. Amen. Thank you, Eddie. <laughs> and the title of my sermon today is our Heavenly Father, and what an appropriate message on Father's Day to talk about our Heavenly Father, because it's His day too. Yes. He's our Daddy, just as Justin told us a couple of weeks ago, that's our Abba, our Daddy. And the message in Matthew 7, 11 is that God gives us more. Now, I've got five points to make to you. I'm a law professor, but my first point is on that word, more. He gives us more. He gives us everything. You who are evil, that's what the verse says. Some of them say, you who are sinners, even you know how to keep care of a child. You know not to give them a snake when they ask for a fish. Well, don't you think your Father in heaven knows how to care for you? He gives you more. He gave you his son. Now, a few weeks ago, Eddie preached, and it was maybe a few months ago, it was a wonderful sermon. Are you willing to die for Christ? That's a tough question. That's not what I'm talking about today, but I've got to remind you of that. Are, willing, are you willing to die for him, to lay down your life for your religion? I think a lot of us said yes. The tougher question, and this wasn't what Eddie talked about then, and it's not what I'm talking about today, but it's a very, very important question, Eddie, is are you willing to live for Christ? Because that's not easy. It's pretty easy right in here to love each other and to praise everybody and to pray to Lord, the Lord and give him our thanks. But when we leave those doors in a little bit and you drive to Walmart and somebody cuts you off or opens up that door and bangs the side of your new car, are you willing to live for Christ right then in that moment? That's not, 
That's not an easy thing to do, and I know that. But that's not the subject of my sermon either. <laughs> There's a tougher, tougher question. Many of you would say, I would lay down my life for Christ. Okay. You're willing to lay down your child's life? Abraham was asked to do that back in Genesis. I mean, I look at that and I think you're probably thinking, who are you kidding? I, I can't do that. I'll give my life. I, I can't give my child. But God did. He knows how to give you more. And he knows what to give you. All you must do is ask. Now, a few weeks ago, I was preparing for this, and my son was sitting with me. My son is studying theology at Wheaton, and right now he's at Jerusalem University, and he sent me a happy Father's Day message to this day from Nazareth. But he sat down with me and said, Dad, let me tell you what I think of Matthew 7, 11. And don't you love the verse that I'm talking about because it's easy to remember, 7, 11. In a little bit, I'm going to talk about Luke 11, 11 because it says the same thing. But Scott listened to me and he said, Dad, you need to wear that T-shirt you're wearing because that T-shirt is biblical. Well, I felt I had to put on a nice shirt. Now, for a while, I thought about wearing this T-shirt under it and then pulling my shirt and tie off, <laughs> but then... I thought, well, this isn't Chippendales, and I don't know. Eddie might not like that for my first sermon ever. So I didn't do that. And then I was going to put it over my head, but then they were worried about all these wires they got on me. So I just brought the T-shirt to show you. And it's probably not easy for you to say, but I'm going to lay my prop down here. And I get so many laughs and so many compliments, and I love this T-shirt. And it says, Dad's ATM. And on the back, you've got to love this T-shirt. It's Dad's ATM 24-7. <laughs> Always in service. And then I love these words. Anytime Amen. you need me. Amen. That's Matthew 7-11 right there. It's modern day language. But that's what, that's what Jesus said. Think of God and our Father, our Abba in heaven, as one great big ATM machine. He gives you what you need. He gives you more than you can possibly imagine. That's what the verse is about. All you got to do is ask. There's this great ATM. Now, I don't want you to get me wrong here now, because there are people, and I don't want to denigrate anybody, but there are people who don't quite pray the right way, and they you know... God, I just need some help with my bills, and I just need some money. I need this new job, and I need this promotion. Oh, Lord, won't you help me? Won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? My friends all drive Porsches. I mean, don't you love Janice? But I tell you what, friends, that's not the way to pray. Now, a good friend told me, now, Steve, God hears all your prayers. But sometimes the answer is no. And there's a lot of wisdom in that, and I'm going to address that. That's my fourth point about the no's that we get. Now, I promise you there's going to be some yeses, and that's my fifth point because I'm going to end on a nice, happy note. But I want to address those no's, first of all, because it says ask and you will receive. A lot of times when people pray for money or that job or just let my football team get one more touchdown, Lord. <laughs> James said we need to pray with the right frame of mind with righteousness, with knowledge that his will be done. All too often, those prayers for physical, material things are answered with a great big yes. But I don't think those are prayers to God. I think those are prayers to someone else. And friends, if that's what you're praying for, you might best hope they are not answered for you because you might live or die to regret it and the bargain you made to get those prayers. So that's not what ask, seek, and knock quite means. You're not praying for $100 bills and Mercedes Benzes. Don't work that way. So what are you asking for? What are you going to get? And guess what? Matthew 7, 11 doesn't tell us. It doesn't. But the beauty of the Bible is we've got four Gospels. And they all kind of say the same thing, which is appropriate because they all saw the same thing, so wouldn't they say the same thing? 
And Luke 11, 11 gives us the answer. And he says, what I'm going to give you more of is I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give you the comfort, the peace of mind, the ability to get through those troubles that you are facing today. All you have to do is ask. And when I realized that in Luke 11, 11, then I went back to Matthew and it all began to make sense to me. And I look back and back earlier in Matthew 6, about 25. He says, don't you know, this is Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount, don't you know, I know how to, to, to clothe the lilies of the valley so beautifully and I know how to feed the birds up in the air and in the barn and the, I think Luke called them ravens. I know how to do that. Don't you think I know how to care for you whom I love? And I'm made in my image? Of course I do. Oh, ye of little faith. In Matthew 6, 35, just before my verse, you will have troubles today. Deal with those troubles. John 3.33. What did God promise us? A life of troubles. But I'll give you more. I'll give you the comfort and the ability to get through those troubles. He didn't promise us a life with no troubles. But he did promise to help us get through them. And that's very, very important that he said, worry about today's troubles today. We all need to hear that. Now, in there, he says, take care of today's today. Now, that says we need to do something, and that's a different message, Eddie. You can give that sermon some other time, because this whole thing about what do we have to do, well, that's going to get me to the thief on the cross, and I'm going to talk about him in just a minute. I'm not sure we have to do anything, but I think if we're here and okay right now, we got to take care of to troubles, and I don't know what your troubles are today. Maybe they're small things. Maybe you're worried about mowing your grass, so go home and mow your grass. And maybe you're worried about a meeting on Wednesday. And, and if you can sit down and get prepared for that meeting and get your papers together, well, then, then, then do it. You know, but if, if you're already prepared and there's nothing you can do about it, Eddie, that worrying's not going to help. I don't know what the bishop is going to do on July 1st. There's nothing I can do about it right now, and there's nothing any of us can do about it. So there's no point worrying about it. I love that movie, The Bridge of Spies, because it's about a lawyer and a client, and the client is, is Tom Hanks, and he's been charged with some espionage, and he might get the death penalty, probably is going to, and John, Tom Hanks says, do you understand, Sherry, what I'm talking about? You might die from this. Why aren't you worried? And I love the line. He says it three times in the movie. Would it help? And no, it, it wouldn't. And so Jesus says, tomorrow's going to have troubles too. That's in Matthew 6, 34. Tomorrow's going to have troubles. Worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow. Now, I learned that the hard way. I, I, I'm preaching to you, but I'm the poster child about worry. I could have written a book about it. And I spent so much of my life, not worrying about tomorrow, but next week and 10 years from now and 20 years from now and well, how are my kids going to do when they grow up? And how am I going to retire? And what are my wife and I going to do? And you know what? It didn't do a bit of good. Oh, ye of little faith. All that worry and anxiety, that, friends, is a lack of trust in God. Now, those are harsh words I'm giving, Sherry, but those are not Steve's words. Those are Jesus' words. He said, oh, ye of little faith. Trust me. Trust me. I'll take care of you like the birds. I'll give you more, more than you can imagine. And I'm going to give you some examples of that in a moment. Just trust. <sighs> but that's going to take me to sometimes the answer is no. 26 months ago, today, 
we were out in our yard and we were working on a fence and my wife was such a wonderful woodworker. And she was kneeling down and she had this big drill thing and it went through this post and it just about hit me on the leg. And I said, honey, you, you gotta be careful with that thing. You, you, you might get my leg. He's, and, and she said, if you don't quit fussing at me, I'm gonna I'm a drill into something else. <laughs> and, and, and I laughed and those were beautiful loving words and if you knew Vicki, you would know. That's the way she would talk to me. Those are the last words I ever heard she speak to me because she stood up and mumbled, I gotta sit down. I tried CPR. I didn't do a very good job. I failed. And for a long while I thought it was my fault. And if you wanna know what eternity is, eternity was all the time it took for that ambulance to get there, but they got there. And they took her to the hospital in Crystal River and I, they let me in, it was COVID had just started and they let me in and I prayed for an hour. And then the nurse came and it was 60 minutes. I mean, it wasn't 61, it was some protocol to work on her for an hour. And they came and got me and the doctor came in, is she alive? No, she died. And my knees buckled and I fell to the floor Devastating words. I never got to say goodbye. I can't talk about ask and seek and not without at least addressing, and I know this is a powerful topic for another sermon, Eddie and Justin, but why do bad things happen to good people? Why don't bad things happen to bad people and good things happen to good people all the time? Well, I don't have an answer for this powerful message, but I can give you my thoughts, and I can give you the message that helps me. And it's not in Matthew, it's in Luke 23, 43, my favorite verse. And you've all heard it. I say unto you, this day, you will be with me in paradise. I could get you five sermons, Eddie, about that. If you ever want me to come back, and give you five sermons out of that. Because there's a comma in there. Now, if you don't know anything about the comma in Luke, now I'm not talking about it today. Go home and Google that, the comma in Luke, and you'll be amazed. I mean, I could, we wrote half the Reformation over the comma in Luke, so I'm not going to talk about that today. And that message also said, this day, you're going to be with me in paradise. Now, you've talked about that before, Eddie, too. I don't know what happens when people die, and I don't know where my wife went right then, and I know the comforting words when well, she's in heaven now. Yeah, but there's a lot of theology out there, my son's studying theology, that maybe there's a 10,000 year soul sleep or something of that sort, but I know, Eddie, that Jesus and that thief went today because they said, we're going today, so somebody went today. That's not my message, though, but that's a sermon. And they went to paradise. And I learned from Eddie that paradise, not quite the same thing as, as heaven. And there's a whole sermon right there of what that means and what happens when we die. But the most powerful, the most common sermon out of Luke 23, 43 gets me back to my point. And that is, you will be with me and my father in paradise. You, Elizabeth, who don't deserve it. And I'm not picking on you, but you know what I mean. That thief didn't do, he didn't deserve that. He didn't do anything good. What did he do? He asked. All you gotta do is ask. And he got paradise. Grace alone. All you have to do, Eddie, is ask. But that's not my sermon. That's what everybody preaches about in Luke 23, 43, but that's not my sermon. My sermon is, is something else because everybody wants to talk, guys, about that thief on the cross. I want to talk about the other guy. The other guy, the one that Jesus seemed to ignore, he didn't really ignore the man. The other one said, now, you're the Lord, you're the Son of Man, you're the Son of God, why don't you get off that cross and save yourself, and while you're saving yourself, save me and this other one too. And of course, the thief that we always talk about said, well, he doesn't deserve to be here, we deserve to be here, leave him alone. And, won't you just remember me? That's all he had to say. But that brings me to my most important message and why do bad things happen to good people? Because you look at that verse and it says, 
you will be with me in paradise. Now, that's a future tense verb. That says, and maybe you don't fully realize this, because Denelin's a wonderful place. It's beautiful with our rivers. But friends, this is not paradise. We're not in heaven right now. You will be with me. Now, I might be in 15 minutes to that seed, but it's not right now. John 3.33 again. I promised you a life of troubles. I'll give you more to get you through it. But you're going to have troubles in this world. You're going to have troubles today. You're going to have troubles tomorrow. Worry about those tomorrow, and I'll help you get through today. And then tomorrow, I'll help you get through those. This is a broken world. I've learned as a Stephen minister a lot of things. Some things to say to someone who's grieving, but a whole lot of things not to say. Oh, she's in a better place. She's resting now. God had a greater purpose for her. God needed her more than you did. No, he didn't. I needed her. But I can't blame God for taking my wife. You can't blame God for taking your child or your spouse. Evil did that. It's a broken world. We let evil into this world long ago at the beginning in the Garden of Eden. And each and every day, every one of you, every one of you, and me too, we add just a little bit more to that evil. God grieves with us when we lose someone. He doesn't want that. But it's a broken world. And he promised us in that great big ATM to give us the comfort and the ability to get through it. He didn't promise to make this paradise. If only good things happened to good people, this would be paradise. This would be heaven. There might be a little bit of hell over there, but this would, we'd be in heaven already. Now, I don't know the, all the great purpose of why we're here, Eddie. I don't know that. That's your job, maybe. That's way beyond my ability. But I do know there's a greater purpose, and if this were heaven, and if we're praying that this be heaven right here today, well, then we'd have to have another earth before that for whatever purpose God had. He didn't promise it would be heaven. God didn't take my wife. He didn't take your child. He agrees with you, but he will give you the comfort. He gave it to me. Look at me, I'm here. I couldn't have been here six months ago. He sent me a series of angels who saved my life. A bunch of them, a bunch of you are in this room right now. Ken, you're here. Joe, you're here. Thank you. Johnny, I think you're here. And Chip, you're up there somewhere. And Jennifer, you're here. And Jimmy, somewhere, maybe you're listening online, and I don't see Ray, I saw him earlier, but there's so many angels in this very room that he sent to me because God gives you more. But sometimes, and I know I'm getting late, but I've got a little bit more thing, things to say. I, he, I, he told me I could take an hour and 45 minutes. He did that just a little while ago. But, and I was going to cook some supper for you because I got a mess of red beans, and I was going to come here and we'd take a break and serve you some food, and then we'd go back. And I'm not a bad cook, am I, John? Whatever, you can give me an amen. <laughs> you can give me an amen later there. I, I, I love to cook Cajun. But, but I look back to the nose, because sometimes we do get a no. Now, I can't go there and think that God had a purpose for taking my wife. I, I, I can, maybe you can tell, tell, convince me of that, Eddie, but I, I can't go there. But I do know this, and I get great comfort for it. And I go back to the very first Maundy Thursday. And a lot of you love Chris, Chris, Christian holy days, and a lot of people say, oh, I love Christmas, and I love Easter, and hallelujah. My favorite is Maundy Thursday, because that's when it began. This is the blood of, my new co of the new covenant shed for you, and for you, and for you. And when they finished, some people say, he said to, to Judas, Judas, go do what you have to do and be, be quick about it. But then he said to Peter and a few others, 
Come with me. Watch over me. We're going to the Mount of Olives in the Garden of Gethsemane, and I've got to talk to my father. Have you ever been there where you felt you just needed to talk to daddy when you were a kid? You ever had a kid that just needed to talk to mommy or daddy and make it better? Well, that's what Jesus did. And he prayed, and he prayed deeply. And what did he pray? Father, thy will be done, but please, Father, take this cup from me. Daddy, please, please, Daddy, don't make me do this. You ever heard that from a child? Don't make me do my homework. Don't, don't make me go apologize to those people, but you know best. He knows more. And then Jesus got up from the prayer, and he looked out at the Peter and the others and had fallen asleep. And he said, the spirit is strong, but the flesh is weak. And he went back and prayed some more, Daddy, please, Daddy, please don't make me do this. And he sweated blood. And I understand from my doctor friends that there's some medical reality in that. But sometimes when you get so angry or so afraid and so upset and so full of worry, your face gets hot and it gets red. And that's the capillaries in your skin. And sometimes it's a medical condition, I can't pronounce it, but sometimes those capillaries burst and blood oozes out of your pores and mixes with your sweat and it appears you're sweating blood. There's, there's a scientific basis for what Jesus went through. And then he saw the disciples and they were asleep again and the same line about the spirit is strong and the flesh is weak and he prayed some more, Daddy, please don't make me do this. And everybody who teaches about this seems to tell me that the spirit is strong, the flesh is weak. He was talking to Peter and I have no doubt he was talking to Peter, Eddie. I think he was talking about himself because Jesus is fully God but he's also fully man. And I get great comfort that he suffered more than I can imagine, that God gave his son, which none of us are willing to do, I don't think, and that Jesus was afraid. The Jesus who had just gotten through telling us, do not worry. It's a lack of faith and a lack of trust in me. If you're out there worrying, was worried. He was scared to death. He wanted to stay. I, I think he liked it here. He always said, thy will be done. But he was afraid. Now, I've learned as a Stephen minister, you, you don't tell people, I understand what you're going through, because you don't know what I'm going through. But he does. He was afraid, just as I'm often afraid, and as you are often anxious and worried. He did, too. I mean, he came to save us. He came to die for us, to take our sins, to rise from the dead. But he also showed us how to live and how to suffer and how to accept it and how to move forward. Now, no big bolt of lightning came down with God saying no, but we all know the answer. There was a great big no there because God did have a greater purpose. And that one gives me comfort. I can't find a purpose in my wife's death, but I get a lot of comfort that there was purpose in Jesus' death. And then he suffered as I suffered. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, well, Steve, this kind of depressing message, and you're going over time, and maybe you need to give me something positive. So I'm going to give you something positive. Because as Eddie, I mean, as we heard earlier, there's a lot of praise reports, and a lot of times the answer is yes. And it's not about the money and the Mercedes Benzes that you get, and a lot of people get a lot of those things, but they're probably the wrong people. But a lot of times there's an answer, yes. And I'm going to talk about it, and sometimes that answer is just about that fast. Now, Eddie, I got four stories to tell him, but I'm out of town, time, so I'm only going to tell you one of the stories. Two of these stories happened right here in this church, and I'm going to tell you one of them, and I have to decide which, so I'm going to choose right now. And I'm going to tell you about my friend Tony. <sighs> COVID was hard on me. My family had five funerals in six months, and a whole lot of other things that were unbearable. And I was alone. And there were times when I didn't see another human soul for several days. And my best friend, Tony, and his wife live in Tampa. 
And they moved there sort of to be closer to where we were in Gainesville because we visited a great deal. I mean, he's retired, but she works. And she travels a great deal. But during COVID, the friendship was hard to maintain. And it became difficult and awkward. And instead of talking every day, it was every few days and every few weeks. And I had difficulty with that. And about two months ago, I was doing a makeup class for Stephen Ministry, and Irene Bra, an angel in our presence, was, was teaching me. And we did a little exercise, and in the exercise, I had to be the care receiver and have a real, either a real problem or a made up problem. So I chose a real problem, and it was about Tony. And the exercise was about how to communicate and everything, and so we were trying to do it in writing, which really doesn't work. But in any event, I shared that the last time we had talked, I mean, he was best man in my wedding. I was best man in his wedding. We were closest. We went through adversity 30, 40 years ago, and there was no one else for each other. But it was strained. And he had told me a few months ago, I miss the joyful Steve, the happy Steve. I was thinking, well, that Steve might just be dead. And I struggled with what he said to me, but he doesn't have training as a Stephen minister, so it's okay. And Irene let me know that, you know, you ask and you get and you knock and the door will be open. But sometimes when that door is open, another one shuts. And, and, and sometimes what you get is the comfort and the ability and the strength to get through this and to accept things as they are. Because God has sent you wonderful friends here in the church. And sometimes you have to let go. And I said, but I don't want to. And she ended it with a long prayer, a really long Irene prayer, but they're always so effective. And it was about 10 minutes, and she held my hands, and she prayed that I might learn to accept the friendship just didn't seem to be working anymore and to let it go, and that Tony might find a way to tell me that he still valued me, even if we weren't going to be so close. I needed that. And I hadn't heard from him in weeks. And then that session ended, and I had to go to another one with Roger, and that one lasted an hour, and I walked out in the parking lot right out there, right out those doors. And I thought, well, I better turn my phone on. It was a phone message from Tony. And so I called him. I hadn't heard from him in weeks, and I called him. And I listened to the message first, and he sounded kind of down. And I called him, and he seemed a little bit not right. And I said, well, what's going on? He said, well... They're going to close Jackie's office. That's his wife. They had moved to Tampa, but they're going to close it. And in a couple of days, we've got to go and box up everything in her office. It's that fast. And bring it to the house. I said, well, does she still have a job? And he said, yeah, she can work remotely or at another office. And I thought, well, here it comes. They're going to, and he said, I think we might just sell our house. And they're both from England. And they lived a long time in Boston, and the home office is in Montreal. So I figured, well, OK, I'm going to get some closure, and this is good. And it was difficult to ask. I said, so you're going to sell your house? So where are you going to move to? And he said, Steve, we're going to move near you. And I said, what? He said, now we have the freedom to come up to Danelle and we want to be by you. Amen. I wouldn't have dared pray for that. <laughs> God gives us more in that ATM, more than you can possibly imagine. And it's like this. There's a time, look, I'm a phone right here. There's a timestamp of his phone call. It was a few minutes after Irene prayed. It was immediate just like that, and it was so much more than I could possibly imagine. Now, I know fully well that they may not be able to sell the house. They may not move up here. I don't know, but I don't need that anymore. Now, you guys out there know it's difficult for us to say, I love you, to another man. I mean, you might say, man, I love you. There's always that, man, I love you. <laughs> Women, you, you probably do hug your girlfriends, but we don't hug our boyfriends, right? So. <laughs> But he said, I love you. 
He didn't say those words, but is there any possible way he could have said it more beautifully than what he said? We want to sell our house, Steve, and live near you. God gives us plenty of yeses. And I talked to my son about that. And he said, Dad, you need to use that story. Actually, he told me to use all four stories. But he, but, but he said, he said, now, if you only use one, the other three are real great, too. And you can use them in a, in a later speech. If Eddie will ever have me back, I don't know about that. But, but he said, use that one. He said, and Dad, the message in there, you're talking about Matthew 7, 11. Look at Matthew 7, 12. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. He said, Dad, God uses us to answer your prayers. And isn't that appropriate? We're part of his beautiful creation, so why wouldn't he use us? Now, there's people out here I know who are troubled, and you're praying. Open yourself up that the answer to your prayers might be someone else right in here or someone else in Denellen who gives you what you need now. And the last of you, if you feel the nudge, because I asked Tony, I said, why? Why did you call me then? I haven't talked to you in weeks. He said, Steve, I was driving around, and all of a sudden, I felt like I needed to call you. So I pulled over and I called you. Wow. God gave me more than I could imagine right then and there. And he will do it for you. All you have to do is ask. It's going to be OK. Daddy's got this. Daddy's got this. Would you pray with me? Lord, thank you. Thank you for the ability for us to get together in a worship service where we can attend. Thank you for your son and the sacrifice so much more than we could ever possibly have imagined. Thank you for using us. Help us realize that we are the vehicle often for the answer to someone else's prayer. And if we are the ones praying for needs, let us be open to accept that you often send one of your other others whom you created in your image to help each other. Help us to trust and to believe, to live in the moment, and to trust that it's all OK, that Daddy's got this. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That was beyond beautiful, beyond beautiful. Can we all say amen? amen? Let's all stand together, if you will, in closing. Steve will be out with Justin in the narthex in a few minutes if you'd like to share with him. During our closing song, always the altar once again is open. If anyone would like to come forward or make the place where you're standing a place of prayer. Worship team.
Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for the message that we received today. What a powerful message coming from Steve. Amen. Father, we may not understand death, but your word says, Father, you give and you take it away. But where we mourn in death, Father, we know you get the glory and the praise yeah. for bringing a child that you created in your image, Amen. bringing them home. Amen. Father, where they are hurt no more. And, Father, as we come to the closing of this service, Father, we ask that you help us put on the whole armor of God and be less of ourselves, Father, and more of you. Until we meet again, may all of God's people say, Amen. Turn around and greet one another. We'll see you next Sunday morning.